And that obviously means that in the bottom right side of Neo Humanity, we are taking a look at the main base of our Canadian Zerg playing from Korea, representing the shop of our rebellion. This is Scarlet. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, Scarlet herself is also a player who, in ZVP, has always been quite the creative player, very open to being the very aggressive player, from proxy hatching to, you know, she won a championship off of Ling dropping. You know, she's always been that kind of open to aggressive ZVP, so definitely as excited as this hatchery. I was going to say, almost Ooh. got blocked again with that probe on the way over. My goodness. Yeah, and thinking of aggressive builds, you look at Neo Humanity, and I can't help but fight to immediately talk about the Rich Vespian guys. There are in a couple of these potential Queen Roach Ravager attacks. And it doesn't even matter from how many drones you do it, right? There are different ways to do it, but I think all of them are powerful. We've seen a lot of Zergs find a lot of success with that. And especially since Australia likes to play a bit weird, and it's already getting a little bit weird. Like, is it the craziest thing ever to open Double Gate in PvZ? maybe not is it the standard no absolutely not right because double gate means that you're going to slow down your nexus and especially firing up a zealot so it seems that australia feels that the right way to go about this grand finals is just to set the tone immediately <laughs> be the aggressor not one but two zealots wadi this is why i didn't want to make too many predictions so i guess zealot zealot into adept adept but are we going to make a triple zealot even i was about to say otherwise that chronobus will not uh, line up so triple zealot into double adept and we're just gonna take it from there like it's another day at the office <laughs> fully walls in as well because i guess casually at some point in this game you're just gonna mine out the minerals and take the top expand which is also completely abnormal so or you just never go to three bases pick pick or choose we do have a double what? pylon uh, i mean i guess that uh, reduces the surface area for the zealots and maybe still one battery can go up right on the edge of creep. That is not going to work. Can you trap Zerklings there yeah. with the probe? I have absolutely no idea. Oh my goodness. Okay, it goes through. I mean, it does protect the Zealots, right? Yeah. If the point is to protect the Zealots, oh. this will oh. absolutely do the job. Oh my goodness. We actually did just kill a, a couple of Lings <laughs> that got caught between the Zealots as well. So that kind of works. And yeah, I guess it is forced in an extremely awkward position where this hatchery now is under some severe pressure. And Scarlet with Lings is, is not looking like this is really holdable or stoppable. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is actually amazing, man. We don't often get to see stuff we don't see a whole lot in the year 2023 after playing this game for 13 years. But Australia is actually just going to guarantee himself a very easy kill on this hatchery in the end. What I like that, by the way, with Scarlet is that he's using that larva, yeah. not to produce links, but to produce overlords, to at least still get a tiny bit of value. I mean, this is a very big investment, make no mistake. Also like that, running away from the hatchery to make sure that the Brutlings can't get too much done. But obviously, Australia is not done yet. He still feels there's a lot of potential here in the Zealous and the Adepts. Link speed is now finishing up, but I would let that adept shade finish up any day of the week as we can get in between these mineral patches. And recall gets used immediately. Okay, it's fair enough. Australia is four workers ahead. The Nexus is late, but I guess <laughs> I guess it worked, right? I guess so, but then, I mean, you're down two pylons over here. He's going to be momentarily supply blocked at least. <laughs> and you have to take the top base. Like, do we hate taking the top base? Are we okay with taking the top base? It feels kind of bad if there's any sort of roach attack and your wall off is just going to be extremely difficult to hold. So then you lose a couple of gateways early. I... Yeah, that is definitely, yeah. I think, a problem, especially on this map, since roach, ravager, queen attacks are very prominent. Uh, losing those pylons did sting a little. One of the other downsides, I guess, of this opening is that the Twilight Council and the Forge are going to be very late. We normally talk about the Oracle every single game in PvZ, and I'm sure we'll talk about Oracles eventually, but yeah, Oracles are not a thing. Keeping Creep at bay, and if Scarlet... Oh my goodness, that's so fast, by the way, but I guess with this amount of Protoss units, it's okay. <laughs> we are just watching a dynamic and a setup right now that is incredibly strange to us. Uh, but yeah, well, I think the biggest downside of all of this for Australia is going to be that he's got nothing to push Creep back for quite some time. And if Scarlet has been incredibly good at one thing throughout her entire career, it's spreading creep. That's going to be a problem. Yes. 100%. And if there's any sort of aggressive attack that's coming with her kind of creep spread, it's going to arrive very, very quickly. So, yeah, I feel like that's going to be um, 
pretty wild. We do see the hallucination scouting around. Is blinking plus one on the follow up from Australia, who is you know fast third base and getting that underway. Has a sentry just in case a force field is necessary. Obviously was using it to hallucinate and scout as well just previously. So yeah, <laughs> just uh, kind of across the board, man. I mean, we are setting up into what starts to look normal, but still off of the weirder foundations and. We still have questions oh, yeah. as to, you know, was this okay for Australia economy-wise? Like, was the income good enough for him? He definitely had a big spike in income. But it does feel yeah. like he's been kind of, you know, now low on workers compared to usual for Protoss. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Five minutes and 50 seconds into the game. That's normally where the Protoss has already overtaken the Zerg. And the Zerg is kind of trying to, like, retake the lead. A 12 worker advantage for the Zerg. Six minutes in. Definitely is a little much. Uh, yeah. It's out there, Wadi. Like, obviously, the timings of Scarlet are going to be a little bit out of the window as well. Maybe road speed is going to be a bit late, but I don't think that Australia can quite push the issue uh, even before road speed is going to kick in. So I guess it will just come down from execution. One thing it is for sure is that Australia has at least a very safe three base setup by now. A lot of gateways, more gateways even. So I guess nine gateways, ten gateways, blink stalkers, an observer, a prism, and all the way. Just send it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess so. I, I feel like it's maybe the better choice is we do have a good amount of sentries here too. We still have the early adept zealot too. Is can just join in, tank a little bit, cause a little bit of trouble, I suppose. So. I imagine we see a little bit of that as our blink will finish and we'll see just how aggressive Australia will be. Scarlet seems comfortable to take the forward base. Uh, that means she will have access to that Ridge Vespian geyser, which is going to enable her to build even more Ravagers throughout this uh, upcoming set of, uh, or stage of the game. And just getting that creep spread out and about, keeping it spread. And it's very soon going to, like, mm. once it starts getting to the halfway point, it feels like it's going in every direction as well. It's going to be all over the place. Yep, and the Scarlet attempted to scout with an Overseer in the main base, but that one got denied. I do still think the Scarlet has a pretty good idea of what she's going up against. Not sure if I'm loving the Infestation Pit right now, but we'll see what she decides to use it for. Uh, so obviously at this point, all the Scarlet needs to do is just crank out as many Roaches and Ravages as possible. This Protoss army is really not going to do very well on Creep. Uh, I think Australia needs way more units than he currently has. I don't think he expected this many Zerg units. Wadi, what am I looking at? This is not a fight that's going to end well for Australia. Even with the additional round of Warpins, I am really not a fan for now. Um, pushing back the creep is uh, something, but all these initial, perhaps not important gateway units fell. But more importantly is that we need to keep our stalk account alive. One of the stalkers did go down there. And Scarlet even fires up a hive. Maybe wants to go into lurkers down the line. But I think at this point Scarlet just needs to pay attention to make sure that she does not find herself on the wrong fight of a road ravager versus a stalker battle. Yeah. I, I mean, Australia just has been extremely underwhelming. Like the numbers just are not there at all. Scarlet's going to have herself a hydrogen and a hive. She's just got plenty to deal with this, and Australia's like, okay, fourth base, let's whack that down. But he wasn't initially invested into the future. Like, he definitely cut workers, his gas count's low, and now he's realizing, man, I got crushed. He's trying to find the follow-up here, but, I mean, the follow-up's a long way off. And by the time that we talk about any meaningful amount of uh, RoboBear units, there's going to be Vipers for days, so... Hive Snipe. Look at the main base, Wadi. Look at the main base. So, a lot of Zealots got warped in, and Australia's just right-clicking it, wants to get the Hive, but it's not quite going to get the Hive in the end, has to settle for four drones. It is a lot of damage, I'm sure that was a tiny bit scary there for Scarlet, but in the end, this Hive will finish up, which will allow her to obviously go for those feisty Lurker upgrades, and maybe get a couple of Vipers down the line. Australia's army supply is still not that impressive, but he is going up to four bases, he is going to get a Robo Bay. But how many PVCs don't we see where there are disruptors against a non-Viper army and there are Colossus against a non-Viper army? It is safe to say that that is absolutely not going to be the case here. Yep. Oh, absolutely. As we just see our few stalkers getting pushed back, there's a link counterattack that's going to hit the fourth just as cannons are coming in and forces a massive Zealot warp in. Scar doesn't need to do anything more serious or, you know, any faster because she just has all the tech still coming up with the Lurkers coming into play. And the potential for Vipers too, it really feels as though she's going to be in a good position. She does lose a few lings there. That was maybe unnecessary. They could have kept on running. But apart from that, it's looking pretty good. And of course, Lurkers, the only thing to fight those Lurkers will be the Disruptors. The rest of the Zealot Stalk Force against Lurkers generally just melts against any decent amount. So it's definitely just getting tougher here for Australia as time moves on. I mean, I like that he's got Disruptors. At least this isn't just gateway units. But 
Mm -hmm. I feel like we're a long way to being a believer in the disruptors, especially with Vipers in production. Not a bad for us, Novas. It does connect with a couple of the roaches. I think Scarlet could have fired up the Vipers a little bit quicker, but maybe she thought that she was going to go up against pure gateway all the way. And maybe felt that rushing into the Vipers wasn't quite necessary. But after not really seeing follow-up aggression, not seeing non-stop Zealot run-bys, I guess Scarlet put two and two together. And that obviously means that the Protoss will most likely go into some of these Robo units. Well, yeah, Seismic Spines is done. Charge is not done yet for these Zealots. <laughs> but this is one hell of a run-by. In the end, it is going to kick in. But the Roach numbers are big enough. Australia does still have that Prism lurking in the shadows. And is going to try with a Stalker army and the Disruptors once more. Well, yeah, obviously, now that the Vipers are out, Seismic Spines is done. First few Lurkers are done. It is going to get very hard for this comp of Australia to get a whole lot done. The only thing... Oh, okay. Obviously, two Novas at a time. Whoa, that could have been big. Instead, it's going to be big with Scarlet. And Scarlet just says, thank you very much, sir. I'm going to go ahead and abduct these bad boys. And the Disrupt account gets reset back to two. I want to say maybe there was some momentum, right, for a couple of Novas. <laughs> nice abduct again right before the uh... Nova connects. At least Australia gets a uh, <laughs> Viper. But That'll yeah, Scarlet BM. starts abducting Stalkers. Wadi, I think we know what time it is. Yeah, I was going to say, little, little BM abducting a Stalker, just completely unnecessary. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the fights so far have been absolutely one side and Disruptors were very close to doing well initially. But yeah, that's what the Vipers are great at. And they're just not at that kind of Disruptor count that can be competitive when you have enough Vipers to cover. So. Yeah, Scarlet is maybe going to eat a oh. massive disruptor shot right there. There you go for Australia. <laughs> but there's also Lurkers moving everywhere else. And that's just going to keep this very complicated. Although some of the Lurkers may be a little bit disjointed. So maybe with that disruptor shot on the other side, maybe we are just a little bit strung thinly out here for Scarlet. Is there any hope for Australia? He is going to start getting some bases. I do think if Scarlet would have just kept her army together, this would have been easy. As a couple of Novas fly forward, we'll connect with one Lurker, but there are still six Lurkers remaining. And six Lurkers on creep against this Protoss army is a problem. Australia's supply does look insane right now. And Scarlet, does he just not have any larva or something, Wadi? Only three larva. Look at the bank of Scarlet. 3.2k, 1200 gas in the bank as well. If Scarlet kept her army together, she would have wiped the floor with the army of Australia. Instead, by spreading herself thin, Australia got a perfect Nova, got a nice little zealot fight against the Lurkers, and that actually got a bit scary for Scarlet after a split second, as the larva problems continue, and Scarlet is perhaps in a bit of trouble, which is crazy, because this game was looking incredibly good for her. I think she could have even ended it. There are 17 Hydras on the production tab. But only seven larva. We only have three queens. Scarlet really needs a few additional queens. The Americas has just been an absolute festival of not making your life easy, right? Like, I mean, there's just been no need to, like you say, like splitting it up. It just made it so complicated. And she just killed all the disruptors prior. One big push. Mm -hmm. Australia has very minimal splash damage. You have vipers that can join in. And we just gave Australia the openings, and he wins. And you know, he won on every single front. He wiped out Lurkers top right, the army left side. You know, got a counterattack too. I mean, that was the issue. As now we're going to see disruptor shots that will hit dead center as well. I mean, the abduct on preemptive wow. disruptors great and all, but that was just massive. And I can't help but feel as though Scarlet has absolutely thrown this game out the window. Yeah, but there's still that mineral bank, and she's still able to mine from the rich Vespian geyser. Scarlet now fires up 12 additional drones. Scarlet, ha oh, excuse me, Australia has 90 probes. Scarlet was on 60 something uh, drones. Scarlet is like, all right, let's go ahead and turn this into a proper macro game. As for a split second there, Wadi, I saw 22 drones yeah. on the production tab very casually, 50 minutes into the game. As Scarlet now builds the Spire, which I think is also a little bit crazy because this game is not stabilizing, right? Like, a Spire is something you build when you're like, okay, we've got all the time in the world. And, you know, I'm not going to attack you. You don't attack me. Now I can maybe make my way into Great Aspire. But Australia is pushing. He's sending it with a lot of disruptors going forward. A lot of Novas connecting to a couple of these Lurkers. But the Lurker count has risen once more. We're back up to nine Lurkers. But Zealots get a kill on the entry in the center of the map. I mean, this game is just bananas. It's all over the place. Scarlet pretty much had this game locked up. And all of a sudden, we are here as now Australia is going to make this fight into the final few Lurkers. We have a couple Blinding Clouds going down, but not all the Lurkers were present. As one more Nova goes forward, connects with a couple of Hydras. Scarlet may stabilize, may hold, but obviously took a lot of economic damage. And Australia ain't slowing down anytime soon. No, he is not. He's going to keep on rallying forward. And now he had the bank to spend 13 Stalkers warp in at once. 
Scott is in desperate need of getting enough lurkers up to truly stabilize here, to truly hold on a couple different fronts. That's the issue. She's been drawn thinly herself, and Stalkers and Archons continue to come across, and we're just going to jump on this base once again, not give Scarlet this economy back. Bunch of cancels going down. Now Scarlet's still looking around with these three Vipers, looking for those Disruptor Abducts. It is much more Stalker heavy now, only a couple Disruptors left. We're going to grab an Archon too, and Scarlet is trying to scrap her way back in the Blink forward into Hydras. It's not exactly pretty. I understand you wanted Vipers, but we get one and we lose a ton of Stalkers. Australia not making this easy either. No, but Australia does have money for days at this point, right? Yeah, <laughs> An insane amount of true. probes, the way we know Australia, the way we know he loves to play. And he has taken bases all the way in the top right side, even taking the triangle base now as well. Scarlet does not want to make this one go on any longer. GG gets called after 16 minutes. It is Australia who takes the 1-0 lead in a game that I really think Scarlet had pretty much locked up Wardy. If she keeps that army together, she makes her life easy. Uh, there's only one screen to pay attention to. Her army would have traded out way better versus the army of Australia. But by spreading herself thin, leaving a couple of units at home, sending a lot of roaches and ravages into the natural, but eating a big Nova, dead heart or dead center of the entire Zerg army. And Lurkers are amazing. But Lurkers in the middle of like three, four Protoss bases all by themselves? Yeah, that's suddenly when even Zealots start dreaming like, hey, we can take this fight. That was a crazy game, Marty. We said we wouldn't make any predictions. We expected craziness as well. Craziness in game one, it already was. What I learned is you never abduct a Stalker of a Strike because he is going to be mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He took yeah. that personal and yeah. he's like, all right, I, I took it personal. <laughs> <laughs> you will not get away with this. <laughs> and then he goes Super Saiyan mode and yeah, just kind of dismantles on, you know, Scarlet, who was kind of, you know, purposefully herself choosing to go on every single front. That was just a mistake. I mean, you know, it would have been fine if she just could have spent her money straight away, right? Like, if she has the lava yeah, behind yeah. it, she just remaxes, and then it's like, okay, cool. Like, I messed up, and my, my little armies didn't do much, but I'm rebuilding, and I surge and kill you. So it probably mm -hmm. wasn't even that bad. She just didn't have the lava, and without the lava, it was absolutely just a wash. And that was that was the real issue, just the lack of lava. Yeah. Because even if you're all clumped up and you completely mess up the fight, having no lava is going to be what kills you as well, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, a couple things knock on effect, and... Yeah, those injects were just non-existent, apparently. Yeah, and the queen count was low. I guess a couple of the zealot attacks at the war prism yeah. uh, definitely reduced the queen count a little. Because Scarlet only having three queens in like minute 12. That's obviously very uncharacteristic. We are not used to seeing that. That was a game and a half. And it started off with the double gate, two pylons next to the forward hatchery to give the zealots a choke point and even trap a couple of the links immediately. It was all very cool. It worked out. But neither you or I was very sure if that was actually great for Australia. And the more I looked at the game, the more I didn't think that we didn't enter the mid-game all that nicely. And if you look at the first Stalker fight, that's obviously supposed to make some magic happen against the amounts of Roaches, Ravages, and Queens that Scarlet had there. I'm like, as cool and unique and creative as that opening was, it definitely didn't put him ahead. It's no. Scarlet spreading herself thin is what was really was the turning point of that game. No, the, the opening was terrible when you when we saw all the information at the end of the day. I'm gonna be honest, Ronnie. Like, like there was a it was moment. Cool though. Come on. It was a cool. Plus for style points. It, like the style points, sure, but like when I it was when I noticed the work account, I was like, the work account sucks, and I'm like, he's taking yeah. such a fast third base, and it still sucks, and that was the issue. The natural was so like he delayed so much to do that. Yes, mm -hmm. it was cool, and yes, it did it did some work, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we're going to dive into this one and uh, see what happens game two. It wasn't terrible. That's a little bit harsh. But, like, he did end up in a bad spot from it. Scarlet was controlling yep. the game. She had all the tech she needed. She had Lurkers. She had Vipers. You know, she'd already reset the Disruptor camp pretty much entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, just just silly way to lose, really. And I'm sure she'll try her best not to let that happen a second time around. Yeah, because if you just compare it to a regular PvC, which maybe not be as fun, but it's like kind of the meta, where it's a couple of adapts into Oracles, into Blink Stalker push. How often don't we have a fight where the Zerg barely has any roaches, right? And it's really the queens that need to transfuse each other, that need to buy some time for then the links and the roaches to come out if the Zerg is already at like a high 60, low 70 drone count. Well, Scarlet had all the units in the world while already cruising in the high 60s when it comes to the drone department. Uh, but yeah, after that, it still all went wrong.
As we expected, it is a best of seven grand finals in the ESL Masters Americas where it's time to buckle up and enjoy the ride because <laughs> things are going to get a little bit crazy. In the bottom right side, we're looking at the main base of our Canadian Zerg player playing from Korea and representing the shop of our Rebellion hit Scarlet. And the top left, it is our Blue Protoss player from Alpha X. It is Astraea. Historically, what it's been very close between these two. Scarlet has won a few more times than Australia did. I believe it was like 15 to 13, but even in map scores, it is very close. And they've been trading series right back and forth throughout the years. There were moments where Scarlet clearly looked like the better ZVP player, but there were also moments where we entered series. We're like, I think Australia is going to do it, man. This is looking amazing. Uh, so it's not that we have a whole lot of history data to go by on who we favor coming into this grand finals. And also when it comes to this specific tournament, ever since we started with the ESL Pro Tour and the regional tournaments a couple of years ago, they've both found plenty of success, right? And Australia was actually, out of the big three, the most successful player of the first year of the ESL Pro Tour in 2020. Because it was kind of cool. Scarlet won one, Australia won one, and Neeb won one. So there was a perfect split between the big three. But Australia was in the grand finals of all three of them. So in 2020, Australia was the best performing player of these three. Uh, in the last two years, though, I want to say that Scarlet and Neeb definitely outperformed Australia a little bit. And entering this year, well, your guess is still as good as mine after this first game that we just watched. Yeah, I mean... I, I, yeah, I, I feel anything can happen, I think, is what I want to say. It really is just the, <laughs> the first game has set the precedent to... Expect anything and, you know, a twist and a turn at every possible corner. It's, uh, nothing's going to be simple and easy here, I don't think so. Robo facility very quickly from Australia in the main base because, <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of day, Roddy. I gotta say, though, I am having a smile on my face because you are also very familiar with casting multiple PVCs in a single day. And at one point, for the 15th time, you're looking at the first adapt going out to the map and a Stargate being planted at home. And you're like, all right, here we go again. It's a dance between the Adepts and the Oracles. And Australia definitely keeps us on the edge of his seat. I uh, don't think that you or I or any of the Starker fans that watch it live will ever forget Australia's crazy build against Rainer at IEM Katowice. A mm -hmm. two base all in, double robo, double prism, four disruptors flying around, firing Nova after Nova. That was one hell of a game and it worked. And when I see this quick robo body, I have to admit, I get my hopes up, man. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be the obs for now as... Uh... I mean, a robo, I feel like a robo and an obs is just such a, this may sound weird, but like a non-opening. Like you're getting, you're investing so much to get some vision onto the map, something that an oracle could do while providing so much more. And yeah, just uh, always find this one kind of intriguing as our hatchery goes down. Three base setup well. getting going. And it's going to be a prism now. Yeah, very quick prism, maybe just to sneak two adepts into the main base and get some damage. Obviously, uh, we saw that cool opening Australia had in mind against our Korean Terran. Which one was it? I think it was uh, Gumio actually, at IM Katowice, where he had two adepts very quickly with plus one, and that allowed the adepts to potentially uh, two shot or in, with two yeah. adepts, obviously one shot. An SUV, one shot a marine. You don't have to worry about that against Zerg. You don't need plus one on your adepts. So if our plan is just to get two adapts as quickly as possible into the main base, that's cool. That doesn't quite seem to be the case. It's just four adapts and a prism flying through the center of the map. Scarlet's building three spore crawlers, Wardy. Uh, maybe just like this must be DTs. Well, it's a lot of things. It's absolutely not DTs. Uh, Scarlet seems to be as confused as we are. Yep, no, it's anything but DTs. A few adapts are just going to jump back into the prism and... Unless you just want the spores to help zone the prism as well, which seems like a huge investment, obviously, when you've also got queens no. on your side. There's no way that Scarlet would ever get three spore crawlers just against War Prism Adept. Like, zero chance. That's not a thing. I, I mean, it's America's Roddy. Everything's a thing here. <laughs> Anything's okay. One of the spores did get cancelled, by the way. So Scarlet, mm -hmm. I think, put two and two together. As we see Australia pulling one of the probes away from uh, the gas as the adepts do try to get in range warper is going to take a bit of a beating it kind of feels that we are just leading towards a old school soul train like we're, we're gonna get a couple sentries i guess we already yeah. have four sentries chilling in the natural 
Yeah, no, Australia is just trying to make potting proud. Maybe potting is watching. And potting is like, give me some soul, Australia. And he's like, all right, mate, you've inspired me all these years. I'll try to inspire you tonight because that is what's happening. Now, if you guys want the soul train, TLDR, once upon a time, Zergs did not have Ravagers. So dealing with Immortals and Sentries was very problematic. Then we entered Legacy of the Void and the Ravager got introduced. And we all said, well, the soul train was awesome. We saw it a million times. But the Soul Train's gotta go, because Ravages just kind of destroyed his build. Australia said, well, I'm still gonna try. For a split second, Scarlet had a Baneling Nest yeah. on the way, as we are supply blocked as well on the side of Scarlet. Scarlet definitely has been confused, but I still believe that Scarlet can be fine as long as he gets a decent amount of Ravages, right? Because Australia just has no unit that's gonna be very good against Ravages and Queens. Yep, no, absolutely. The, um... Well, as you can see, this army coming. Ravages, Queens, Lings... Combined, it can do very well. We are going to send a few things out on a counter-attack. So, okay, now they're going to turn around and go for more of a surround. I like that a little bit better. feels like we just have to be all or nothing on this defense. Scarlet trying to spread out a little bit. Immortal sort of putting some work. The Stalkers warping in the back. And the Prism staying very safely back, so you can't lose that Prism to the Bile. That's going to be extremely important for Australia to see success here as we do grow up some good force fields, getting a few pickoffs already. And the supplies are getting closer. Army supply especially is not in a great place right now for Scarlet when a lot of it is roaches that are just getting melted by immortals. Like you said, Roddy, she's been kind of confused all game long and this confusion does not lead well into being set up decently against a big attack like this. Well, the Lings are going to try to do the thing from the back, but slow zealots have a field day against Zerklings as the three Immortals are still so healthy. Uh, plenty of force fields ran down, even though plenty of Rev just tried to take care of these force fields. The sentries, the little bubbly boys, just never ran out of energy. And now we can really see that the Immortals have the confidence to move forward, get on top of the roaches. And Australia says, we're going to party like it's 2012. We're going to make Immortals, we're going to make Sentries, <laughs> and we're going to take the 2-0 lead in the Grand Finals of ESL Americas. Wadi, I don't know what it is, but I'm kind of loving it so far, because Australia is just... It honestly feels like he's been freed, right? For a while, it almost felt that we chained him, and we're like, you have to play meta, man. You want to be <laughs> one of the best pros in the foreign scene, you got to play like Showtime, Max Pax, and Hero. And now it seems that he's taking a tiny step back, and he says... I'm just gonna go back to being Australia because I love being Australia. A lot of it does not make too much sense, but because we think it's confusing, for Scarlet it's obviously even more confusing, and it's really hard to have the proper read if you're Scarlet. Yep, and especially when these are not the sort of things you're usually scouting for. You know, you're basing so much information nowadays off of when did that prism pop out? What kind of things come with the prism? Well, glaives or maybe like DTs, right? These kind of things. So then you're making bad decisions because you're just not used to looking for, like, a soul tree. And the moment she saw sentries, the moment the Overlord saw four sentries, mainly Ness cancelled, she went straight fully into unit production with Roach Ravager. It was just too late by that point, right? Like, obviously as well, like, the start was a bit weird. She lost some drones. She built the spore crawlers that just didn't really, you know, do much of anything. And uh, now we'll be heading ourselves into game number three with Estrella on a 2-0 lead and looking... You know, first of all, turn the first game around, but then looking like a very solid player in game two because he just swept his way through that second game. No issue at all. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the misreads didn't help. The uh, investment in the Spore Crawlers didn't necessarily help. But I also think that the Link potential counterattack and then surround obviously didn't do a whole lot for Scarlet. It's, it's hard to figure that out in advance, but looking back at it, I wonder how that would have all played out if Scarlet would have been a bit closer towards that bridge and you start spamming balls almost immediately, right? And try to buy as much time as possible because every second that goes by, more Zorg units pop out of these hatcheries, more roaches can become ravages and queens gather up energy as well and maybe that would have helped out a little bit better but none of that matters what does matter is that this man has taken the 2-0 lead in the grand finals both players already qualified for the dream Act masters young shopping later this summer but at this point you want to crown yourself the champion of the region you want to walk away with seven thousand five hundred dollars this is all for access australia I get to mention, of course, top two have already made it to that uh, offline finals guaranteed trip and seed into the second round or the second group stage or so. As in the bottom left, our red Zerg from the Shopify Rebellion is Scarlet. And like I say, I, I really did favor her coming into this, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good, good thing you said let's not make predictions, Roddy, because it is not going as predicted. 
No, I didn't want to make predictions, but then I still snuck in that I'm also leaning towards Scarlet because she looked good against Diego Calazur. And Calazur is a very good Terran player at the moment. We know that. Uh, one thing I was a bit worried about is that out of all the guys that have been playing today, obviously, uh, time zone wise for Australia, this is amazing, right? Where it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, cool. What time is it for me when it's like 11 here? It's like 2 p.m., 2.30 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That's a perfectly fine time to play a couple of games of StarCraft 2. Scarlet, who's currently over in Korea. For her, it's obviously rather difficult because it must be like 6 or 7 a.m. almost. 6.30. But... Yeah. yeah. Of course, the players did know a little bit in advance, right? The times and maybe Scarlet was able to adjust her sleep schedule a little bit. Uh, but eventually it feels like it doesn't matter how well you try to prepare for it at a certain moment obviously it's going to bother you right that you've been up all night or that you woke up at a weird time you just kind of feel that no oh, absolutely it's uh you know if i'm scarlet i'm sending an angry match of spirit later i'm like yo bro <laughs> you made my tournament so much difficult um yeah. but no i mean these things happen these guys know as well you know Scarlet's been living in Korea a long time, and she's she's had to do this before. Obviously, today mm -hmm. has turned into a bit more of an extreme than it would have been usually. So you're right, it definitely does probably favor Australia that little bit too. And I will say, I feel like there's been points where maybe the, the tiredness and the lateness might have had an effect as well on some of the things that have happened, and you know some of the games making taking some weird turns. But uh, as this game gets set, we're gonna see a Stargate coming down, and dare I say, Boo. a fairly normal opener, Boo. yeah. <laughs> 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 Come on, buddy. You promised me craziness in this grand final. What is this? An adept and expand the Stargate? Who are we? What, is, what happened to Australia? Are the chains back on? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, this this is your up. He's like, maybe you should take this seriously. There's actually a good chance here. No, Australia. Yeah. Keep keep going with your heart. Just do do whatever build kind of comes up on the randomizer next. Maybe maybe <laughs> yeah. there'll be something wild off the Stargate, Roddy. We can hope. He's got a dice with like a whole bunch of Protoss builds, but that dice does not go from one to six. You know, he's just got like 17 options. And he's like, oh no, I gotta do the double zealot or the triple zealot <laughs> in the double adapt. I guess it is what it is. I can't let the dice down. <laughs> oh, he just rolls one dice. It's like zealots. He's like, oh, I like zealots. He's like, three zealots? What? <laughs> yeah. Second Oracle starts. This is abnormally normal for. Uh for this series, and I guess probably see Triple Oracle move into towards... Well, there's a Twilight Council coming down now, so obviously Pretty options quick, off right? of that. But yeah, a little bit faster, right? It could still be, like, Glaives instead of just mm -hmm. Blink. Just, you know, if you do want to mix up and be a bit more aggressive, there's a third base. So, yeah, options for sure. We'll see if he makes a third Oracle, because Glaives and a third Oracle definitely doesn't go together. Blink, and uh, you, you can just go very fast Blink and be aggressive, but with a third base... I feel like it is. I'm leaning towards waves. Yeah, me too. Even though it's a big map and it's maybe not like the best map to be like, oh, surprise, Resident Evil Glaive Adepts. But I think you're right. Uh, yeah, we see extra Adepts being walked yeah. in now. Well, that's so. obviously not a guarantee, but I am leaning towards Glaives as well. And there we do see the Resident Glaives. Let's take a look at these two Oracles on the other side of the map, because this is obviously very important in PvZ. So far, so good for Scarlet. And that's actually very nice for her, because that Spore Pro was a tiny bit late, Wardy. So imagine if the Oracles would have came in from this angle right off the get-go, then those Queens would have been able to get the shots off, and a lot of drones would have fallen, but a couple of drones still fall. Um, so, not the end of the world. Three drones is acceptable damage against double oracle, but you rather don't see it when you know that your queens are in the right position and you're trailing 0 2 in the best of seven grand finals. Nidus, oh. okay, what? Nidus, so Ling Queen Nidus. Hmm. That doesn't feel good against Glaives, especially if you can get up to a good amount of adepts initially, because the adepts just trade so well against the Lings. So then the threat is the Queens, which eventually the adepts do fine against as well. Now, obviously, if you let the first Nidus come up without any kind of, you know, without any yeah. contest, it's still going to be I think that's what deadly. it's all about, mate. Yeah. I think you just hit the nail on the head there. I think it's all about the first Nidus. If the first Nidus goes up into the main base, all the Queens get out, Queens can transfuse each other, then Queens and Lings can absolutely win the fight against the Adepts. But if Australia shuts down the first Nidus, he's got vision of it, right? Let's go ahead and follow his camera quickly. Australia, oh my goodness, he just warped in all the Adepts on the left side of the map. He goes for a recall, but he recalled them towards the third base. That Nidus is going to go up, Wadi, and now Lings trying to break into the natural. Well, all hell is about to break loose. Queens are here, although they're wandering off creep. Need to be a little bit careful. Keep that creep spread going. We have a little bit of overlord creep spreading as well to help out. You need that creep to transfuse, and that's going to be the powerful part of this. 
against these adepts, which are kind of getting a bit split up. In fact, the adepts are getting all over the place. This is one of those scenarios where adepts absolutely just want to stick together and be best buddies, limit the surface mm. area available. The lings on the low ground aren't doing anything, by the way, so they're getting shut down. Super battery in the main, and oh my goodness. this is Queens versus the world at the moment with a lot more adept showing up too, and uh, Skull just ain't killing anything. Nope. Scarlet had a lot of her links running into the third base. While the Queens were doing their thing in the main, Scarlet sent like 20, 30 Zerglings into the third base, but Australia had a battery there. He had two adapts, and the Oracles were helping out. And now I just kind of feel that eventually these Queens will run out of energy. The four gateways are being Chrono boosted. Even a Revelation has gone down. <laughs> As the yeah. adept number is still incredibly high, GG gets called. Scarlet once more split up her forces there. I don't know if it would have worked if all of the units would have been in the main base immediately, but the Lings at the third, at the 12 o'clock base, they just got obliterated by a couple of adepts and the Oracle of activating Pulsar Beam. And obviously, since this is so all in, I kind of think things need to snowball out of control in the main rather than trying to find damage in the main base and the third base at the same time. Yes. No, I mean, just just go in one place, right? Like, just, you get the Nidus up, full send the Nidus and, and just commit, but... Yeah, I mean, you just... The, the Lynx split off to the natural, and there's just a few Adepts there that got caught up in Choke, which was obviously fantastic for them as well, and... I mean, obviously, hard to just sort of say anything about that. That was just, like, the worst-case scenario for Scarlet, even though she got the Nidus up. Australia just mm -hmm. had... I mean, it just looked as though Australia had too much and it was never going to work, but that's one of those scenarios where when the execution right. is a bit different... It can be a completely different game, um, but that just wasn't it. And Australia takes a 3-0 lead, and the longer this series goes, the more convincing it gets. It is obviously, uh, if you're Australia and you make a lot of adapts, and you're like, all right, with these adapts, I want to find damage. The adapts are very good against Zerklings, they're good against drones. If you then get attacked, you're like, oh, well... You know, that's fine, but there are still moments where it's like your adept numbers is not quite there yet. And adepts, if they're not backed up by a shield battery, they have a hard time fighting links and queens at the same time. But yeah, then they do need to fight links and queens at the same time. Uh, I gotta give kudos to uh, Australia there, though, because it's obviously not easy if you get Nidus to still stay calm, right? And be like, yep. no, I need to leave two, three adepts in the third base. My oracles are actually not that useful right now in the main base. I'll send those to the uh, third base as well. I have a couple of adepts in my natural. Because the queens alone, they are not just going to ravage the main immediately. It's like the links that really do the ravaging and the queens do the support. So Australia obviously handled that very well, defended in a very beautiful manner. And uh, yeah, looking back at it, I think it would have been a lot better for Scarlet to once more keep her units together. I expected a lot of things, Wardy, but a 3-0 for Australia after three games. And as you said, starting to look more and more convincing as the games go by. That would have probably been the last of my predictions. This absolutely would have been the last of my predictions. Especially if you asked me to predict like halfway through game one as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> that really did start off even, uh, even more ridiculously, really, when we think back to it. So, uh, yeah, we get ourselves into game number four. Chance for Australia to win the America Regionals. From, like I say, like, it's not weird that Australia would win if you no. hadn't watched StarCraft for, like, the last couple of months. But if you watched the last couple of months, it kind of is a bit surprising. And the way in which he's doing it and the plays he keeps taking out, I think, especially, is, is what makes it for me. I 100% uh, I agree with you because we can't forget that the man was literally playing on the final day of the Swiss yeah. group format. Australia was 2-2 two two in the group stage. He was one best of three away from being eliminated in the group stage. Fast forward, you know, record scratch. Three zeros <laughs> up in the grand finals as we load into Royal Blood. In the top right side, we're looking at the main base of our Canadian Zerg. She really needs to turn things around right now if she wants to crown herself once more as the queen of NA. This is Shopify Rebellion's Scarlet. In the bottom left from Alpha X, he's a map away from being once more the winner of the Americas. Well, for the first time in the Americas, previously North America, it is Australia. Blue Protoss in the bottom left hand side. Can he be our first combined Americas champ? Oh, it's getting awfully close. Obviously, Australia was pushed to the limit in his quarterfinals. The PvP against Trigger, it went all five games. Uh, it was close, it was competitive, it was wild. That really was, I think, one of the more fun best of fives throughout the entire Americas region. Uh, I thought it was incredibly exciting to watch. 
Rony, we saw the semi-finals. We kind of favored special a little bit. In the end, special didn't quite live up to the hype. Australia got the job done. We're like, all right, the finals, though. That's where it gets difficult, right? But Australia truly is just growing in this tournament. And it almost feels with every round that got by, he just got better and better. And it got more convincing. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh... yeah. It absolutely has been a little bit more convincing. What do you think, Roddy? He had to pick a build for game four here on Royal Blood. What do you think Australia has in store for us? Because he tried to play, you know, you know, Oracle into Glaives. A little bit wonky, but a bit more normal. Mm -hmm. Do we go completely uh, Maybe just we go four gateway Glaive. You know, yeah, take it from true. there. Four gateway Glaive, Dark Shrine follow up. We haven't really built any DTs yet. We know Australia loves the DT. Could obviously go into Oracles once more. Could even open up Stargate Void Ray. Uh, something that we haven't seen out of him yet, but you know, it's starting to become a little bit more popular again as we do have the Stargate there. And let's see, will it be a Void Ray? Will it be Oracles? Perhaps he goes full NA and goes double Stargate Phoenix like Petty Mac does sometimes. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun as our lanes will quickly dispatch off this pylon block on the low ground so that gets taken down immediately. Our oh, ling speed is starting up and we are just waiting for the next step of this. That Stargate's still ticking along. Yep, I, I hope that Scarlet does still have the fighting spirit. It is obviously very hard to yeah. look into a best of seven, find yourself down 03, 6 or 7 a.m. Uh, where you are located and be like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. But I feel like we have seen Scarlet have a couple of remarkable comebacks throughout her career. And I'm still like, what? I'm still not 100% convinced that Australia is going to win this grand finals. But <laughs> obviously a 3-0 is a 3-0. And it's starting to become a very realistic scenario here. As we have the first adept, just taking a little sneak peek into the main base of Scarlet, and the adept will see that everything is normal. Do we still have an active creep doing? Yes, we do. I like that, by the way, from Scarlet. Sometimes in high level ZVPs, even like eight, nine minutes into the game, there is a bunch of surface area in the main base that's not covered by creep. You won't see a warp in happen. I actually really like this. Why not? Why not just go ahead and give yourself that extra movement speed for queens against oracles, for links against adepts? I think it's a very cool play. Yeah, no, I mean, it just, is, it just makes sense, right? It's just a little, little tiny investment, and it can go so well for you. As the depth shows up, Oracle going to join in the fun. We get four kills already. We're going to get, uh, okay, just the four. All very early kills, worth knowing with the first Oracle. Mm -hmm. He took some damage on it, but early damage is usually very good damage. And the Twilight Council to follow up after just the double Oracle again. Honestly, maybe just more of the same from Astray. He didn't even get to do the attacking part of it last time around, so this time maybe he can. <laughs> Maybe Australia felt that his fun got taken away. He's like, hey, I wanted to bounce in between all the bases <laughs> with my adepts and have a field day. And I was forced to fight at home. That is definitely what it's starting to look like. And I really like that you said there it's four early drones, right? Because sometimes we see a Protoss with the third Oracle showing up, get four drones. But if the Zerg is then already at 55 or close to 60 drones, like, okay, that's nice, but it doesn't mean that much. But dropping from 36 to 32 drones, yeah, that actually has a pretty significant impact on your economy throughout the entirety of the game. And this time around, though, it is not going to be Glaze Wadi, it will be Blink. Mm. And at least, I guess, the good news for uh, Scarlet is that Scarlet is investing in plus one melee, which I do think is the upgrade you want if you're going up against Blink Stalkers. Absolutely, Lings are fantastic against Stalkers. Stalkers usually rely on the Oracles to aid them, kind of against the Lings at first. We have gone up to triple oracle, so that's obviously kind of a sign, I guess, that Stalkers may be more on the cards. And, uh, yeah, like I say, with triple oracle, you will have that little bit of extra damage output to help against the Lings. It's pretty much every Ling going down here at the cost of, uh, what, an Adept or so? It's just clearing out those numbers early already as Astraea is still looking good on work account. His army supply is looking decent as he keeps warping in. Of course, the first round of Stalkers generally pushes mm. Before Blink is done, so keep that in mind as well, as our oracles will just go to the main for a bit of harass. Just misses the drone on the hatch on the low ground. Yep, well, actually now tries to go for one of the queens, and Australia will get at least one of the queens. And actually looks at the second queen that's carrying a lot of energy. Australia really committed, will get the double kill, and every single oracle lives until it flies into queens on the low ground. So that was the first oracle that was already microed back, that was already saved. That does end up dying. Look at where we are expanding, Wadi. Scarlet has the high ground. And I already thought that was a bit of an ambitious base. And Astraea is like, hey, cool. I'm just going to go ahead and take the gold. Hero does it. And if Hero does it, why can't I? Why can't I? Yeah, why the heck not? He's going to use this as a forward pushing point from his, uh, for his stalkers. 
which actually works really well. Obviously, as long as you don't get backstabbed too heavily, the Lings are going to backstab right now into the third. There's nothing over Ooh. here. Battery doesn't matter if there's nothing defensively in Estrella. But now he's going to have to deal with this. He's going to start sending his oracles back. A couple of zealots get warped in, but the battery is long gone to Scarlet. Great attack over here, but in some serious work. The oracles do show up back at home. That means the oracles aren't here to support the stalkers, though, which can be a bit scary as well. But they do have a stasis ward to help them out if necessary. And Scarlet finds herself yep. four workers in total in the end. The thing is, though, why the oracles run out of energy, and now Australia will warp in a couple of adepts, but these adepts don't have resonating glaives. Scarlet, I think, is actually going to go for the natural. Love it, as that stalker died. There's the cybernetic score is exposed. Maybe the links. Oh, I love this. The the right click to the, the the shift click of the links being able to turn around immediately, because Australia can only really take that fight if the adepts are shading. And Scarlet is now going to set up one hell of a surround. There is that stasis, and it actually works out super well for Scarlet. And Scarlet is also going to commit to the batteries. It feels that this is a nightmare for Australia. Yep, he is not having a good time. He does get some zealots in front of some of these stalkers. They could blink across the minerals and play from behind, but... And the oracles are low on energy. Scarlet is going to back it up. Finally, those zealots are really putting in some work. They have survived a long time here. Supplies mm -hmm. overall are still surprisingly even. Scarlet's just on such a low drone count. She's been so aggressive with units. She moves into plus two melee. She moves into towards bay and speed. But if she sticks on a work account like this, she might have issues in the end. Right now, she might be uh, about to kill a bunch of workers with this core. breakthrough, though. Cybercore, no shield, but the real choice. Why the Link's not running to the main base? I feel like that would have been a cool play. Yeah. Create a little bit of chaos. And Scarlet is just making more and more links. A couple of links are going to find that base in the center of the map. It's really just feel that both players. Our, uh, this is like kind of going for it, right? We're video gaming, we're building a lot of units, we're battling, let's have some fun. As maybe the Bailey's gonna open the floodgates here for all these links. That is something that Australia would absolutely have to respect. I also want to give kudos to Australia for the way that he saved those stalkers at the gold, but none of that matters. As the Bailey's come in, Bailey's will connect with the adepts with a lot of probes. As that shield battery should fall, and at the same time, Scott is gonna send her links into the gold. 121 Zerklings currently on the map, Wadi. That's a lot of lings, and the Banes are just a perfect complement to them, because the only issue Scott was really having was with the Zealots protecting the Stalkers. The Banelings obviously completely removed that, <laughs> and that's GG for Scott to get one on the board. And she does find herself a map in this series. It's not going to be a clean sweep. We are going to find ourselves 3-1. to one. Scott is bouncing back. Scarlet lost 150 links in the 9-minute game, and still had 117 links towards the end. Obviously, you love adding in a couple of Bane Links. We love plus two Bane Links. We often talk about it. They one-shot the workers. That's not it was so much about. It was a couple of Zealots in choke points backed up by a battery or an Adept backed up by a battery that made it sometimes hard for the Links to truly live up to their potential. Well, you don't need crazy amounts of Bane Links. Just having four to six to eight Bane Links to basically blow up the gates and then the Links can start flooding in. That was a very nice touch for Scarlet. So we head back to the Americas. Scarlet at least gets a point on the board. I don't think that Australia is going to play Stalkers again, though, where it's maybe like, huh, out of all the builds, this one I struggled the most with. But the start was actually somewhat promising for Australia. Yeah, no, it, it looked good. The Oracles got some good damage done. It felt like we were defending well. The Lings just kept on going, though, and they just really did arrow through eventually, and Australia didn't have enough of a follow-up. As we hop ourselves mm -hmm. into Water Babylon for map 5 of this series already. I mean, obviously, for a best of 7, it feels like we're steaming through the games. We've not had the... The back and forth macro, really. I mean, game one, kind of, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a fast set of games so far here in this series. Yeah, I want things to snowball rather quickly. Obviously, Scarlet was committed because you very uh, rightfully so pointed out the work account, like 58 drones. That looks problematic, but with that many links, with plus one melee already, plus two as the follow up, bulletproof at home, with plenty of vision, with plenty of queens. I felt pretty good about it for Scarlet, and I love the way that Scarlet played it out, but just a lot of confidence, not too focused on taking a fight. And I did still love the way that Australia handled that surround, because I was like, oh my goodness, he's gonna lose everything. But it kind of just blinked to the left side of the gold minerals. Talk is still chipping in, couple of zealots being wiped in. That was good crisis management by Australia, but I think in the end, the composition of Scarlet just worked out, especially as long as the zealots don't have plus one. Zealots suck against links. Like, you give him plus one, <laughs> Zealots, amazing. They don't have plus one, they don't have charge, they're just terrible. Yeah, there was like a few moments where I was like, ooh, Australia's supply is like really holding up well. And then like the Banes as well. I was just like, okay, well. And it was all just like, it was one of those cases where like all the supplies just such low tech units as well. And I know Assault was mostly links, but it just didn't mean that much in the end because the links were getting better. 
the upgrades kicking in. Well, time for Babylon, Roddy. It's time to see if we once again have well, just another chance of closing out this series. As in the bottom right, still a map away from being a regional champion this year, it is Astraea. And in the top left side of Babylon, 25% there of crowning herself the champion of the Americas. We are looking at the main base of our Zerg representing the Shop of Our Rebellion. This is Scarlet. Perhaps you can just sometimes forget about the score in a series, Wadi, and just be like, I had to win four games coming into this. I still yeah. have to win four games for getting into this. And That's now only sure. three. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't mat matter what order you do them in. Just got to win four. So, yeah, the goal is still the same. I guess you kind of got to do them in a row now, but yeah, put that part behind you. Forget about it. Be like, all right, if Australia can win three games in a row, why wouldn't I be able to win three games in a row, right? <laughs> yeah. And we often talk about it, but momentum is such a real thing in StarCraft 2. We see players have the tournament run of their lives until one thing goes a bit wrong in a game that they are supposed to be winning, suddenly it all falls apart and the wheels can just come off and series can really be turned around incredibly quickly. So still not counting Scarlet out. I also said it when she was down 0-3. I'm still kind of a believer, buddy. No, uh, especially Cena you know, when a game kind of instills me with confidence a little bit again, right? Because it, it is easy to maybe think, like you said at one point, it's like, man, you know, you're down 0-3. It's the middle of, well, it's now early morning for you. It's uh, it, it's hard to find that kind of push to, you know, get back into this. But she found it. She got it. And now it is, once again, a series. And like I say, I, that, that gives me that bit more confidence too. She, she found a way. She fought hard. She didn't just roll over. And we have ourselves a, a final on our hands still. We wait for Astraea's choice of build. He's kind of really went from kind of wackier to much more standard as the series has gone by. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the, the kind of the peak of standard and then we start going wackier again. Maybe we start working the other way. Something like that. Uh, I feel like this is the map where he does love his robo build. So I'm, I've got my hopes up for the robo. I'm not going to lie. I think it's going to be the one gate for us robo. And I think we're going to open up with a couple of disruptors and speed war prisms. Damn it. Guts is stark. <laughs> What happened to this man? He was doing so great when he was wild. I love the robo build. I'm sad. <laughs> man, he is, uh, he's really just like, man, the closer I get to winning, I should just play standard, right? You know, I don't want people to remember me winning the regionals off of, like, for being crazy. You know, I want to be remembered <laughs> as the good old Honest Protoss player or something. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps that's what it is. Now, obviously, in game three, things did work out very well for Australia, but in, in a way, it was a bit of a dream scenario, even though we said it could be close with the Queens and Lings against the Adepts with Resonating Glaive. It, it comes down to the execution a little. But obviously, if you're getting ready to attack your opponent, but then your opponent is attacking you, you're like, oh, cool. I can fight with defensive reinforcements. I already have battle units. I can even get the help of a shield battery or two. So in the end, that obviously worked out very well for Australia. As the first adept got into the main base, got two zerglings and a scout off. That creep tumor was vulnerable, but I don't know if we would have been able to get three hits off. Would have been close, but I think it was doable. Yeah, I think so too. Missed opportunity perhaps as he lets it go on up. And obviously just anything to slow down early game would generally be nice. So maybe a bit of a missed opportunity, like you say. We do have our oracle coming up on the stargate. The couple of queens still producing. Our hatchery finishing on the natural very soon. And these couple of lings coming up. Our nexus... Building on the third. Mm, Masray will still get at least one of the uh, Spore Crawlers as the Adept shows up at the same time as the Oracle shows up. Pulsar Beam's trying to do its thing. That is five drones at minute four. So once more, Scarlet gets knocked back from 35 drones to 30. I actually really like this aggressive play with our first Oracle Wadi. So often, we always wait for two Oracles. But if you wait for two Oracles, you're also going up against a way higher number of Queens. The Adept obviously is the decoy there, but you can't completely ignore it, because an Adept can still two-shot a drone. I love it. It's, it's cool play by Australia, and it's definitely paying off. Yep, no, absolutely. Just uh, solid stuff, getting some good damage done. As we are sitting on just the two Oracles, and our Twilight is finishing, Roddy. Is this where we head back toward Glaives? Or are we just going to blink it up once again? Waiting. And it is going to be blink. It's funny, because out of all the builds that Australia has gone for, that one obviously went the worst. I don't think there was a single moment in the game where we were like, okay, it looks amazing for Australia. At one point, it's like, okay, the potential with the gold craziness. 
Uh, but it never looked phenomenal. A Scarlet will fire off plus one melee once more. You know what it also... And what piques my interest as well is that we know historically Scarlet has not been a fan of going up against Adepts, right? Once upon a mm -hmm. time, she was rocking the Adapted tag on Battle.net. Australia also mentioned it in interviews in the past. Now, that was a different era of the, the Glaives. It wasn't necessarily Oracle into Glaives, but I feel that Scarlet enjoys going up against Stalkers with Zerklings. I think these are kind of the games that she's not just good at, but I also think she thinks they're fun. And that makes Scarlet an incredibly dangerous opponent. And she's also having a good time. I, I really agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Because I was actually going to mention it earlier. I was like, I really would have loved the Adepts. Because I feel like Scarlet hates playing against Adepts. And she's already down like, you know, 0-3 previously. I was like, why not now make a play against the one thing she hates the most. And, and really like get under her skin. And make it really difficult mm -hmm. to get your focus back in this series. Um, it's interesting to see like the same build second time over now. Obviously only two oracles this time, which means less defense against the Lings, which might be a problem because we still have plus one melee Lings just being all the rage at the moment from Scarlet. Link's about to be done, but Australia ain't really going anywhere aggressive. And Stalker's just hanging back, fourth base coming online, and now extra gates setting up too, but not yet putting the forge into play either. Needs to get that upgrade started. So Yeah, it seems... Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it just seems a little bit kind of wishy-washy right now. Uh, but now we get the plus one charge on the way. It feels that Australia is making a play on everything that happened in the previous game, right? Where it's like, okay, I'm supposed to be aggressive with the Stalkers because I want to slow the Zerg down. But you're already slowing yourself down by making that many links. And if you're going to make that many links of a low economy, I'm just going to go up to four bases, get a couple cannons and batteries and keep on macroing. And then I've already done my damage, right? Because the Zerg has done damage to themselves. That seems to be the play here. And I don't hate the logic. But the one downside of it is that if a Zerg has four bases, or in this case even five bases, it really doesn't take a long time to crank out those 15 extra drones. And then we're still playing a relatively just all-out macro-oriented game where Zerg will have plus two melee as one more of those oracles, or actually the first one of the two oracles, does get picked off. Five drones is nice, but Scarlet is sitting at 77 drones, so I don't think it was really worth losing that Oracle now. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, the later it happens, the less impactful it is, and an Oracle for Vision and help against the Lings feels way better than five drones at this point, where Scarlet just kind of, you know, blinks and they get they remade already, you know? Just doesn't feel like that great of a trade. Do you like the Storm? That's obviously a great choice against what is going to be very Ling Bane focused, so that's going to help you a mm -hmm. lot as long as we get there. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't, as a stasis ward pops on the queen, and Australia's probably just trying to get this oracle out of here and just make sure you at least have revelations available for the follow-up of this game. Information really is key, and having a heads up on where units are coming from gives you a really good shot at getting some good storms off. 90 probes is awesome, but it obviously also means that Australia, his biggest possible army at the moment, is going to be 110 army supply. That can be more than enough if you nail some storms and you're helped out by, and you're backed up by batteries and the Zorgas are stacking into you. But it is definitely something to keep in mind, especially because Australia sometimes just randomly goes back into building even more probes. And that would really make his potential army quite small. I'd love to see some drop lords, Wadi. I know I don't think we have overload speed yet, no. Uh, not just for the bailing drops on mineral lines, which I think mm -hmm. is always a cool play and worth trying, but just these links with plus two melee, they hit hard in this phase in the game. And we've seen Rainer find a lot of success with random link drops. I'd love to see Scarlet like try to sneak it in. Oh yeah, nice storm. Yeah, good start in storm as we do uh push those links back off the rocks. The rocks do get finished off, so an opening for Scarlet to utilize when she gets to attacking. We do have a stasis ward set up. Another reason why the extra oracle would have been nice, right? More stasis wards are generally good. I do not mind if Australia wants to knock those rocks down, but he doesn't have the time, really. Storms are good again, though. That ramp really kind of causing trouble for Scarlet, and good stasis ward as well. Honestly, the one stasis we have is going to funnel a lot of units through and give you a good place to storm. Really helps get rid of a lot of the banelings from connecting, and a ah, very good fight for Australia. Yeah, Australia weathers the storm easily here. Round one was a success, as there are still five High Templars out on the map as well. Australia still has a couple of Zealots chilling on the top side of the map. I think Scarlet actually does not have vision of those. Creep does not go far enough to see that. 
Uh, I think Scarlet will be able to try this again and again. And Australia obviously needs to be careful because defending with cannons and batteries and stasis traps is one thing. Stepping on creep is often a whole different ball game. And Scarlet is either looking for a run by or a surround. I think she's not totally sure herself what she wants to do. In the end, we go for a bit of a surround as the Banelings are leading the charge. They will connect with one high Templar. A couple of stalkers will fall. More links trying to make something happen in the third base, but you know, the cannons are standing strong. Now the zealots are finding damage on the other side of the map. Warp prism in the main base as well. Will that zealot warp in finish up? Yes, not a big one, but it's still yeah. a zealot warp. Just a couple, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, so obviously goes uh, a ways to helping, and we do have at this point in time, Australia really taking control. The storms have been great, and it was a little bit haphazard on the bottom side, but he continued to shut down the banes before they reached anything meaningful. and. Just Scarlet can't seem to get a good wrap around, and her money is kind of low for 84 drones. She is not on an instant mm -hmm. rebuild or anything, so yeah, Australia maxed out. Scarlet is not, and just knocking down a few drones there, slowing Scarlet at a good time. Next Zealot run by found ahead of time, though, so this one's not going to cause as many issues. That's obviously a pretty big deal for Scarlet, who is definitely looking to try and take a step back into this game at this stage. It's actually insane that Scarlet has basically tried twice to kill workers and Australia has lost a grand total of zero probes in this game. That's That, that, that feels impossible. That feels illegal against this many links, this many bailings, right? Or in some bailings are always able to explode at least near a pilot and take out a couple of probes near the gas. Uh, but zero workers have fallen so far on this side of Australia. That is impressive. As he's trying to go up to five bases, Scarlet is wondering what the right angle is, where Australia is going to be the weakest. As the War Prism shows up at the bottom left side one more time. A couple of Banelings connected with Zealots in the top right side. There are just a lot of little scruffles going on right now, a lot of little fights. Neither player really getting the upper hand on the other. But what we can say is that Australia is already dropping a Fleet Beacon and two Stargates. Scarlet now also fires up the Hive, but obviously there is no Spire yet or anything among those lines. Yeah, the Hive feels almost like a continuation of, like, this current army, where it's like, I'm gonna get Adrenal Glands or so, right? Maybe a Viper or two. It doesn't feel like the, okay, you've got oh. big tech, I want big tech, and Storms like that again, deadly, and Scarlet actually tooked herself in the corner. There was potential for more. I think Australia's afraid Scarlet's about to jump on, jump on him, but... Yeah, I actually think he could have had even better storms continuing through. Scarlet is going to jump on Australia now. Let's see some storms on this left-hand side. Particularly, I think it's going to be quite important. We are hitting a lot of the Banes quickly. And obviously, if the Banes are hurting, the Archon's going to get a couple of shots off, finish them up, and Scarlet's supply just plummeted. She's also losing in the bottom left side. This hatchery's going down, and Australia is the America's regional champion. Just like that, 